Uh, I am Dr. Kavan Ratnatunga. I studied at Royal College Colombo and went to the Colombo University to do a, a physics special because I was interested in astronomy. I was at the Institute of Advanced Study in Princeton in 1984. And that is when I first got an email address. It was around that time that I found out there was something called CompuServe. CompuServe was, gave you access into the wire news reports that were published by the wire, news wire. And you could keyword search it on the word Sri Lanka and find all the stories that are posted and that was far more than was posted by any individual organization like BBC. Somewhere around 1990, Gihar created Lucknet as an organization which could actually run an email service between Sri Lanka and the US and from US to anywhere else in the world. With that, I sort of also automated the, uh, the way that the inter that computer was accessed and news was picked up uh, and posted. So this was something which appeared uh, long before Google and long before the internet and the browser was created. So this was in the early 90s. So I think Sri Lanka was on the internet scene leading the way even uh, with webs, uh, Usenet groups like uh, culture.sri-lanka was created long before sock.culture.india was created. One would think that India would be doing these things before but I think Sri Lanka had a lead start in a lot of these uh, social media. So the understanding that the internet was the future and what would become, what should be used was not fully understood at that time in Sri Lanka. We don't archive websites. Whenever a, a, a political party changes, the first thing that the ministry does is to take down the website of the previous uh, minister, minister's website. And that disappears. You can't find it. It's not archived. We don't have regulations to archive everything on the internet. And we need that badly. Printing on the internet should be no different to printing on a book. We should have legislation which ensures that uh, all the things that are put, at least in the LK domain, are properly archived in the National Archives so that researchers in the future can access those archives. Maybe the only way it would happen is if there is legislation which said this is essential that there is a law in the country, like whenever you publish a book, you have to send five copies to the National Archives. Back in 1998, I felt that there was a need to put more data on Sri Lanka on the internet. We had a very little amount of data except for the news. And now I have put a lot of uh, web, a big website. The domain is laktiva.org. Actually, I have got laktiva.lk as well. I need to set it up so that laktiva.lk also is, is, comes to the same website. If you go to the laktiva.org website, you have links to uh, the coins.laktiva.org, which is a history of coins from uh, 300 BC all the way up to the present day. It's just 2,300 year history of Sri Lankan coins. Uh, there is a website called notes.laktiva.org, which has currency notes from 1785. Uh, the older ones taken from auction catalogs, I don't have those old ones. But Then there is a website called maps.laktiva.org. I have about 20 maps which my father had collected in the U things dating back to about the 1500s and historical maps on Sri Lanka. And there's a lot of other things like the Mahavansa and Chula, uh, various other things. And if anybody is interested in helping with that, I'm quite willing to help with that as well.